It's always a tough task, but it's a daunting one this year for Mizzou to go to Georgia, try to upset uh, the number one team in the nation. We got Mitchell Ford on the line from PowerMizzou.com on the Rivals Network to help us uh, break down the Tigers. Mitchell, we appreciate you stopping by. Thanks for having me, Mark. Absolutely. So let's get caught up on uh, Missouri football following five and five last year in Eli Drinkwitz's uh, first season. I think a lot of people are impressed with him in regards to how engaging he is. He presents himself well, fun loving guy, uh, an up and comer, obviously uh, winning uh, big time at Appalachian state and earning that uh, Mizzou's position. So this year, if most people were asked to name a dark horse in the sec Eastern division, a lot of people would have named it Mizzou. Uh, troubles on defense in particular, though. What would be your take on uh, the troubles and issues for Missouri this season? Yeah, I think you're right that, you know, obviously the season hasn't quite lived up to expectations so far. And some of those expectations may not have been super realistic. I mean, you know, you're still talking about a coach who hasn't gotten the vast majority of his recruits on the field yet. And also a team that, that did lose five NFL draft picks off of last year. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's still not gone, I think, as anyone would have hoped. Uh, defense has been a big part of that. Um, I mean, they rank last in the country and run defense, and, and that's just not a good recipe. You know, opposing teams have pretty much just been able to line up and, and run the ball with success uh, pretty much constantly. So, um, you know, I think there's a few different things that go into that. I mean, obviously, you know, the talent's not good enough. You, you lose Nick Bolton, the guy who's starting now for the Kansas City Chiefs. That's going to hurt. He, he covered up a lot of different stuff. Lost two uh, starting safeties to the NFL. Lost two defensive linemen who transferred to Arkansas. One of them, Trey Williams, is having a really strong season. But also, I, you know, for whatever reason, the hire of Steve Wilkes clearly hasn't panned out. I mean, I don't know if it's, you know, players not understanding the scheme, the scheme being ineffective or what. But I, I don't think the talent is the worst in the country. But the results have been. And, um, you know, obviously, he's, you know, Steve Wilkes has a few games to uh, to try to get that corrected or else I wouldn't be surprised if we see a change during the offseason. Yeah, I think some people that uh, don't follow this program extremely close uh, were maybe a bit surprised by how many people – players, especially on the defensive side, also the offensive line, were taken in the NFL draft that uh, depleted the roster from uh, 2020. Uh, looking at uh, this week's game against Georgia, Connor Baslick's health is front and center. Um, you don't know exactly his status, but uh, we're going to find out a little bit later on Thursday. What is your gut check on this one? Yeah, so Connor Basilek left the uh, Vanderbilt game last week in the fourth quarter, kind of took a hit on a quarterback keeper and didn't come back into the game. Um, Eli Drinkwitz, you know, played his cards close to the best, as expected when we talked to him on Tuesday. Wouldn't wouldn't say one way or the other about whether or not Bazelak would play and also wouldn't say which quarterback would come in if he can't. Uh, Tyler Macon, true freshman out of East St. Louis, replaced him against Vanderbilt. But Brady Cook has, you know, been kind of more thought of to be the number two guy and, you um, Drinkwist did say that if it was a dis different situation, he might have asked Cook to come in. So anyway, we didn't get to watch any of practice on Tuesday, which we usually do, which you know, to me indicates a good chance base like didn't practice. Um, the, the team usually releases an injury report on Thursday afternoons. We'll see if there's anything definitive on Bazelak. I would personally, I'd be surprised if he plays um, just, you know, based off of, you know, what the injury looked like and it being described as a soft tissue injury and how this week has unfolded, but it's not impossible. Um, but then even then, like I said, not sure who exactly will start if he doesn't. Between Macon and Cook, they've only thrown nine passes this season, so they would be thrown into the fire against uh, the number one defense in college football. 13 to 5 against the spread. Please join us on Patreon. That was last week showing 107 and 69 against the spread this season. Join us on Patreon. Just search Mark Rogers TV. All right. Uh, talking. Mizzou football with a daunting task uh, uh, in Athens. Uh, we got Mitchell Ford on the line. You can catch his work at powermizzou.com on the Rivals Network. Um, Tyler Beatty's one of the best backs in the nation. The quarterback situation's up in the air from a health standpoint. Uh, is there any possible way to formulate an upset formula for Missouri in this one? I, I think I checked the line at close to 40 in this one, which – for, for a, a team outside of Vandy in the SEC is unheard of. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, it's a massive line. Um, but, you know, you're looking at probably a backup quarterback making his first career start in Athens against the nation's number one defense and throw in the fact that Mizzou actually has not covered the spread this season. They've played 11 straight games where they've failed to cover the spread. Um, that's, I think, all the things that go into making this a really big line. Uh, I, I I mean, realistically, I can't come up with a, a formula that's, you know, for Mizzou to win this game. It's not impossible. Crazier things have happened, but not much crazier. Um, you know, I think it would take something like, you know, a few really big plays and Georgia making some uncharacteristic mistakes. I think you'd have to have probably Georgia turning the ball over a couple times, you know, Mizzou busting some big touchdowns either on special teams through a turnover, maybe Tyler Beatty breaks free for a big one, but I, I don't see them sustaining drives against Georgia. And, and really, I don't see them being able to stop the run either. So I, I think the only prayer would be if something happens where Georgia comes out sleepy, maybe turns the ball over a couple times, maybe Mizzou jumps out to an early two or three touchdown lead forces Georgia out of its running game and can kind of hold on from there. Gary Pinkle, obviously the recent standard at Mizzou. Uh, Barry Odom had some solid records, bowl teams at Mizzou, and now we got Eli Drinkwitz again coming off a 5-5 five and five year that with all the craziness included, certainly you have to give a pass, especially to first-year head coaches. But this season being a bit of a disappointment, I'm not in any way putting Eli Drinkwitz anywhere close to a hot seat uh, but at the same time, um, what what is the fan base response to what's going on currently versus what the expectations are? Yeah, I think there's a lot of fans that are disappointed with this season, but I, I don't think Drinkwitz is really feeling any heat. I mean, first of all, that there's even if the fans wanted him to be fired after this season, it just wouldn't be realistic from a university perspective. I mean, you're talking about a second year head coach who, like you said last year, hardly counts. It was you know such a mess, and they would owe him, yeah, I think twenty. $4 million or something like that to fire him. So that's not going to happen at Missouri. Um, and, and it shouldn't. I mean, you know, you're talking, it, it takes a while to rebuild a roster. And Drinkwitz has been recruiting really well. And as you mentioned at, this, at the opening, he's done a really good job with PR. And I think he's still pretty popular among the fans. So, um, you know, I think that the honeymoon is worn off a tiny bit this season. You, you don't have people saying, lock him up for life and acting like he's, you know, the second coming so much. Um, you know, he's shown that he's, you know, he can make mistakes. But the way he's recruiting, um, I, I think that there's still a lot of justified optimism for the future. And for anyone familiar with re recruiting in regards to what the expectations are in the SEC, just to keep up, you could have a top 25 class in the SEC and be 10th or 11th in the conference. Uh, right now, um, Mizzou, yes, recruiting heavily here with 15 hard commits, depending on the services you know, they've got a top 15 to 25 class in that range as it stands right now. Of course, there's still a couple months to go, but we are nearing um, National Signing Day, at least the first one in which about 85 to 90 percent of the class will be signed. So this is an impressive showing, considering that Mizzou's typically in that 35 to 45 range nationally. Yeah, this is this feasibly could be the second straight year where uh, Eli Drinkwood signs a tw top 20 class on rivals and, and Mizzou had never done that before in the history of rivals last year. They were number 20 right now. I think they're 16. I, I haven't looked in a few days, but last time I looked, they were at number 16. Um, the, the crown jewel is Luther Burden, five-star receiver out East St. Louis, number one receiver in the country on rivals. He actually was down to Mizzou and Georgia, ironically enough, that we're mentioning it this week. Um, you know, that that was huge. I think one, obviously, to get that talent, but more so just to to show that, you know, Mizzou can keep some of those in-state highly ranked kids home. That's always been an issue losing, you know, the, some of the stars from the, the St. Louis area to schools like Ohio State and Oklahoma and Clemson and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I, I think that the recruiting is a big reason why people are still still pretty optimistic about drink what's in Missouri. Now, that makes total sense right there. Yes. Five and five. Yes. Disappointing season here in 2021. But look at these two recruiting classes. You don't see those at Mizzou. Good stuff. Mitchell Ford, PowerMizzou.com. Check out his work there on Rivals as Missouri prepares for the onslaught at Georgia. Mitchell, we appreciate you stopping by. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me.